Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. My name is Anthony and this is FPV Builds. Today we're going to be soaring high into the stratosphere as we do an unboxing and review of one of the fastest planes ever built, the legendary SR-71 Blackbird by E-Flight. If speed and innovation spark your interest, please be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. I recently went to the Intrepid Museum in New York and I was able to see the SR-71 in real life. And I will say, it is a very impressive plane in person. It's not a small plane though, it's larger than an F-14 Tomcat. It's amazing to me how fast it was for the size of the plane it was. Before we get to the unboxing, I just want to share a brief history of the SR-71. Emerging from the shadows of the Cold War, the SR-71 was conceived as a long-range reconnaissance aircraft. Its lineage traces back to the U-2 spy plane, which despite being very impressive, had vulnerabilities. The SR-71 was designed to address these, with speed and altitude being its primary defenses. The Blackbird was not just any aircraft. It was an engineering marvel, made primarily of titanium. It was designed to withstand immense heat from flying at Mach 3 plus. Its engines, the Pratt & Whitney J58s, were hybrid ramjets. And its sleek design, not just for aesthetics. It was one of the earliest implementations of stealth design principles. The SR-71 served in the US Air Force from 1966 to 1999 flying higher and faster than any threat it could. It could outrun missiles. It provided invaluable reconnaissance, particularly during tense Cold War situations, capturing high-res imagery from 85,000 feet at speeds exceeding 2,000 miles per hour. Beyond its military service, the Blackboard set numerous speed and altitude records, some of which still today stand. For instance, its flight from New York to London in just under two hours remains legendary. The SR-71 retired in the late 90s, replaced by satellites and more modern reconnaissance platforms. But its legacy, it's more than just a plane. It's a symbol of human and American achievement, pushing the boundaries of what we believed was possible. Today, it rests in museums, still inspiring future aviators and engineers. Well, that was our brief history of the SR-71 Blackbird, a machine that truly reminds us that the sky is not the limit, but just the beginning. I hope you enjoyed it. I also hope if, if you liked today's video, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button. All right, everybody, let's get to that unboxing. All right, everybody, so let's get to the unboxing of the SR-71. Um, this is going to be, like everything else, a FPV platform, and probably the first FPV SR-71. I haven't seen anybody else put any FPV on them on YouTube, so here we go. Now, <clears throat> a couple of years ago, Banana Hobby came out with an SR-71 that was, that was, um... Mixed reviews. It, it was a hard plane to fly. A lot of people bought it but didn't have great success with it. So, there's been a lot of great reviews about this one so far. I haven't heard a lot about crashing. We are going to set up this plane for hand launching. Um, where I fly, I don't have a lot of big straight grass runways or concrete runways. There go, there's the box. The outside of the box. It, it, this is a weird looking box for any RC plane I've ever had. It's really long and flat. So Horizon does a great job. Um, most of the airplane companies do a great job of packaging these, right? Because they don't want their product to be damaged, and then they have to do a return and stuff like that. And it's not worth the headache. Here is the landing gear. Let's take a look at that in a second. We're just going to get everything out of the box. 
and then we'll go through it. Oh, it's taped down here too. They did a really good job of taping this in and getting it down. zip tie. There we go. So, um, if you're watching the video, you saw the intro, which was a brief history on the plane. Some of the pictures. Now, there's a lot more to the history. This was brought up um, as part of Lockheed and Skunk Works. Um, there's a lot of history in this plane, so if you're interested in more history, I didn't want to lose everybody, uh, lose everybody's interest by starting out with 20 minutes of history, so I just figured a brief history on the plane would be cool. Um, I'm thinking about doing the rest of my Warbird unboxings and videos in that format. If you like that format, please let me know. Um, if you don't like that format and you just want me to get straight to the unboxing, also put that in the comments as well. Trying not to destroy the foam because I keep the boxes sometimes. This looks like, this looks like the nose and a sticker. Really, really cool how flat this thing is. Like there, there isn't a lot to this at all. I think it's out. I think that's it. That is it. All right, we got the plane out. Uh, yep, very cool. If you see me looking up, it's because I, I set up an overhead cam now, so you can get an overhead view of what I'm doing. I actually set up a couple of cameras um, and some new lights for the studio, so let me know if you like that as well. All right, so here you go. Here is the main fuselage airframe battery goes underneath right here I don't know oh that's the looks like the receiver one of the receiver wires one of the antennas goes there I'm going to have to pop that off because I don't fly spectrum so maybe I'll do a giveaway with this receiver since I don't fly Spectrum, um, maybe I'll give away this receiver. So let's do that. If you fly Spectrum, I like that. That's a good idea. If you fly Spectrum and um, you want this receiver, let's comment Spectrum in the comments. And... Uh, We'll do a random generator and we will, on the other thing on the bottom is the instructions. If you comment spectrum, I'll throw it through a random generator and then we will um, pick whoever the computer says one and I will ship it out to you. We'll get in touch and we'll ship it out to you. I think that's a good idea. Maybe I should fly Spectrum. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about Spectrum, and I've also heard some bad things about Spectrum as far as range goes. So that's why I don't fly Spectrum. I, I, I don't fly a popular... I don't guess it's popular. I fly a FR Sky for my planes, and then I fly Fly Sky for my quads. Which I'm sure that's not popular at all. Here are the landing gear. Just kind of taking everything out. Nose cone, which to be honest with you, I'm probably going to trim that down a little bit. Just makes it a little bit easier to be a lawn dart. And the instruction manual, which I'm not going to read because I'm a guy and guys don't read instructions. At least that's what my wife says all the time. Okay. Oh, it's nice and flimsy. All right, so that's smart. So what they did here is instead of making this very rigid plastic, they figure people are going to lawn dart this thing. 
Um, that's just, you know, something could stick it to the grass on landing. They, they made it pretty flexible, so I don't have to trim it. So that's pretty cool. Gotta say, I am rather impressed with the feel of the foam. Um, it does not feel cheap at all. The foam feels, it almost feels like plastic, to be honest with you. It is very solid foam. Um, I have one of my favorite planes is the E Flight T28. I'll grab it real quick. And the only thing I do not like about this plane, and this is the, the cheaper one, this isn't the, the one with the landing gear and the, you know, it's not the carbon cover or anything. The only thing I don't like about this plane is this is literally like flimsy styrofoam. You can see the cells, it's a large cell. Um, it is it is not great quality. Great flying plane, probably one of my favorite planes to fly. I'm just not a huge fan of the quality of the foam. And this is actually my second airframe. Uh, I had one of these and it crashed and it took a very light tumble. Nothing major and the wings were just shredded. So, But that's not the case with the SR-71. The foam actually feels great on that plane. That's one of the reasons that I... Um, that's one of the reasons I tend to lead Motion RC over at eFlight is my personal opinion is the foam from Motion is better um, on most of their models. So, but yeah, this is this is very very nice foam, very nice. All right, so real quick before I flip this over, everything feels pretty solid on this plane. It's a very nice plane. Uh, this is just a quick tip I have for everybody. So I like to keep foam pieces around. Um, if you get a package and it's got this nice, soft, flexible foam, it's great for when you're working on a model and you don't want to just put the model on the table itself and get it damaged, especially if you have to do some work on it. So I like, I like keeping some of this aside. It's a great little tool. You grab a screwdriver. Too big. Yeah, not too big. Yeah, a little too big. I know I have a small screwdriver around here someplace. There we go. Yeah, that just pops off like that, and there is, is this the receiver? This looks like the receiver. This thing is pretty freaking cool. Interesting. Very, very interesting. The only thing I don't like is I'm probably... Okay, so it's got a little gear driven servo back here. And that's what controls that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, little gear driven servo. Okay, why would they do that? Why wouldn't you just put like a lightweight servo in there? All right, so that's that, as you can see here. I mean, I don't know why they would put these little gear. I, I, I get this is from like the UMX line, right? Where they, um, this isn't unofficially a UMX product though, right? Is this a UMX product? doesn't have any UMX labeling on it, so why would they use 
tiny little UMX servos. I understand saving uh, weight, but... Alright, so another thing um, for people who fly line of sight that this plane does come with, it does come with two sets of um, rudders, I guess you can call them. So you more visibility, you can see them, you can tell which way is up on the plane. Um, I'm kind of baffled by this whole gear servo situation here. I'm not a huge fan of, a huge fan of that, and I would have rather had servos. So that might be an upgrade that we do on our own. And here is oh, this is a flight controller. Okay, understanding more now. So this is an A three. All right, it's an A3240A flight controller for Spectrum. Interesting. So I'm gonna have to swap that out. So if anybody's interested in this little flight controller here, we'll, uh, I'll give it away in the comments. So I'm gonna have to put my own receiver in there and then it looks like I'm gonna swap out these servos and put my own servos in there as well. So stay tuned and follow up for the build on this because we're going to be taking all this E-Flight stuff out and putting our own stuff in. We also have to put the FPV gear in. Um, I'm just going to screw this in for now. We also have to put the FPV gear in. So this is the bottom hatch. This is e version of their XT60 connector, IC3. Um, this is where the landing gear would go. So I'll just put it in real quick for everybody to see. I, I'm still very impressed with the overall feel and quality of the foam on this plane. It really does feel nice and solid. Um, it does feel like really high quality foam. Hmm. Oh, I'll read the instructions. There we go. That just goes in there like that. And then this one just goes in here like this. There you go. We got landing gear. And I'll probably take it right off. And then you saw how I removed this hatch before. Which is smart. They have a little air vent on that so it can stay nice and cool. Nope, goes like that. Yep. Oh, and there's a magnet at the front of it. Very smart E-Flight. Touche. It's got a little magnet in the front of it as well. Okay. So very cool. Uh, and that's it. So FPV camera, and I'm not putting the gear, the wheels on, so they're just temporarily held in right now just for this purposes of this. But there you go. Landing gear, tiny little wheels. I mean, assembly-wise, there really isn't a lot to do to this. I mean, here you go. Now, I'm a purist. I kind of want to keep it looking the way it did. I don't think there was ever an SR-71 with uh, red rudders or airfoils or whatever you want to call it, winglets, airfoils, whatever you want to call these. But these just click into there, like that. I'm probably going to give this a good coating in that Mod Podge to protect the foam. And I, I tell you, I'm really still overly impressed with the foam. And then it looks like, yeah, that's probably where I will put the FPV setup. It's going to be right there on the top side of that. So I get a little bit of the nose in view. Um... I'll put the camera here. I want the VTX to get air, so yeah, I'll put the VTX right there too. Camera, VTX, then I can access it through the battery tray through the bottom, which is gonna be great. So, and I'll just mock it up for you real quick what it's gonna look like. And I think I do have some small servo, uh, servos. So 
So one of the benefits of flying analog still is I can put tiny little analog VTXs on stuff and I don't have to worry about it weighing a lot. But mini cam there, VTX there. Let's see how we can get VTX. This is a little mini VTX. We'll do cam there, VTX there. Make sure I get some nice weight. I'm not going to really have to chop up the model too badly if I'm just going to make a couple of little holes for the uh, wires to go down, go down. So that's good. Get rid of the landing gear. And then, I, like I said, the servos, I'm going to look at that a little bit more closely. Um, but I do have some tiny servos that I can put in there. Reach down into my servo box here. Pretty sure I have some tiny servos. There we go. Like, why wouldn't you do these? Why? Like, this is <laughs> this is this is this is a servo right here. Okay, look at look at how tiny that is. Okay. Now this is a digital Metal Gear servo, right? And it would absolutely not be that much bigger than that. Like, look at that. It's basically the same size. Boom. And then I could take those off and put those in there too. Yeah, so we're going to put real servos on this. Um, and the way I believe this plane flies, this is the elevator. They all work together. Um, when you're going up and down, all four of them work at the same time, so you gotta throw a mix in for that. But this is your, your elevator here, and these are your ailerons or elevons. They work both ways. Um, but that's that's how it's set to work. And if you throw a mix in, all four of them should work at the same time. It's kind of like my F-16. So yeah, so we're gonna mod this. We're gonna mod it, and we're gonna make it FPV. So there you go. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Um, with the updates to the studio done, we'll be a lot more active. I know it's been a hot minute since we've posted a video, but don't you worry. There's going to be plenty coming, and we have a bunch already shot that we just have to get done and do some editing on. So I appreciate everybody watching. I appreciate all the support I've gotten so far. Um, we recently went to over a 1,000 subscribers. And I, I couldn't believe it, and I was thrilled. Please keep the support coming, and I promise you, um, at the end of September, we're going to be doing a giveaway. So we're going to give away a couple of things, and when we get to 2,000 subscribers, we'll do another giveaway. So, all right, everybody, thanks for watching. Stay flying, and uh, I'll see you soon.